So sometimes in physics, when we're solving a problem, we don't need the exact answer. We kind of need a rough approximation. And that's what this is. That's what the order of magnitude is. It's an estimate. Okay. Another word for this, another kind of common phrase, uh, is, is talking about doing something called a back of the envelope calculation. An order of magnitudes are very useful uh, in these kinds of calculations, figuring out how big our number should be. Okay. So order of magnitude is based entirely around the number 10 and what factor of 10 your answer is going to be closest to. So numbers like 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the negative 3, 10 to the 2,000, these are all orders of magnitude. And we can find how big an order of magnitude is by taking the log of a number. So you, what you want to do is you're going to want to take out your calculator. Okay, so literally do this and follow along and do these calculations along with me uh, get used to following this procedure because because you'll be doing it throughout these lectures okay. so if i want to know what is the order and magnitude of the number 10 i can figure what that is i can figure out that order of magnitude by typing log of 10 into my calculator and when i do that i'm going to get the number one so the number 10 is one order of magnitude, which I'm going to abbreviate uh, just to make writing a little easier as OOM, OOM, one order of magnitude. So what if I want another order of magnitude? I want the order of magnitude of the number 300. So I can figure this out by typing in log into my calculator of 300. And when I do this, I'm going to get a number, I'm going to get 2.4 uh, I'm going to round this to 2.48. So uh, I'm writing down this number. Um, you can round right away from the calculator. Uh, when I'm writing down the numbers to actually round them, I'm going to make sure that I go to the hundreds place. Okay. So you can you can round right away, right off the calculator, or if you're going to write the numbers down, make sure that you're rounding to the at least the hundreds place. Because then when I round this, I'm going to get the number 2. And that's going to be two orders of magnitude. Let's take a quick uh, sidetrack and let's see what happens if I would have rounded this to the tenths place. I would have written down 2.5, and then when I round this uh, for the final answer, I would get a 3. Okay. And that would be completely and utterly wrong. So if you're writing down these numbers and in between steps, make sure that you're going to at least the hundredths place so that your final rounding is correct. Let's do one more example. Let's say I want to know what's the order of magnitude of the number, uh, let's say, 5 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so what's going to be the order of magnitude of this? I would type in log 5 times 10 to the negative 3 into my calculator, and I can write down the kind of in-between number that I get. You can run straight from your calculator, or you can write down these in-between steps. And we got negative 2.307. Okay, so I'm rounding to the thousands plate last time. Doesn't matter as long as you round past the tenths place. You want to round at least to this hundredths or this thousandths. Okay, so when I round this number, I get a negative 2. That would imply that I have negative 2 orders of magnitude. Is that a valid answer? Does that make sense? Can I have a negative order of magnitude? Uh, sure you can. No problem. You can have negative orders of magnitude. So to get some idea of if you understand this and get some extra practice, uh, there are some quiz questions posted so you can quickly go through and, and do some of these calculations on your own uh, and get an idea of if you understand this. If you're having trouble, uh, go to the discussion board or to, to post some questions uh, and we can go over more orders of magnitude calculations.